Welcome to the second video for the Painting Buddha Academy. Today we will uh, have this nice miniature here. Um, I guess most of you will already know what it is. It's Horus uh, from Forge World. Horus the War Master. Yes, Horus the War Master. <laughs> for a painter, this is just an awesome model. Uh, yeah. you, you have a lot of uh, tiny details, um, big, nice volumes. Um, you might think it's tricky, but uh, bit by bit, it's qu actually quite easy and nice to handle. Mm. And um, well, there's a reason why we chose uh, Forge World. We are all big fans of Forge World miniatures. Yes. And um, especially, I think this um, character series for the Horus Heresy that they yeah. did is just awesome. Uh, Simon Egan, who's uh, sculpting these, is a, first of all, he's an absolutely nice guy. Uh, if you ever met, ever met, met him at uh, Forge World Open Day, yeah. it's really, really nice. And uh, the the level of detail that you see, the sharp lines and everything, is just yeah. perfect. It's it's really amazing. What will be uh, the other chapters? Uh, we have black and the gold frames. Okay. Um, we also have a chapter where we focus on the uh, on the hat and the mm -hmm. light effect on the in the the OSL light effect here uh, inside the armor. Yeah, and uh, we talked about this obviously before you started. This is going to be major. Eye catcher basically uh, of the miniature is going to be the face. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think the face is quite challenging, uh, especially when you do want to paint a proper light effect. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we'll see how that works. I think it should work really nice with the red in here and the all the black armor around it. Mm -hmm. I think it should it should look really good. The first chapter um, will be about how to paint a nice black armor like that. Mm -hmm. mm, it's almost non-metal from the way it's uh, painted with a sharp reflex, but uh, I like to to have it as a, like a polished uh, polished surface, yeah. just a black surface, uh, not necessarily metal. This time I decided to start with a black foundation. Uh, usually I paint first black and then white on top to have like a like first light sketch but uh, the problem with that is the grain of the spray paint uh, is quite hard to correct especially on small uh, surfaces like that mm. so that's why I decided to go for black actually it's uh, quite a while since I uh, painted my last figure on uh, a totally black foundation mm. But uh, yeah, I quite like the smooth look uh, you can get in the, the, with these tiny highlights. Mm -hmm. And uh, off camera, just so that uh, all of the viewers can see where we are going uh, at or what we are going for, is uh, already um, a, a leg that you have completely finished. Mm -hmm. And also the back part there. Yeah. Also uh, the top of the shoulder pads, um, because we have all those elements we have here on the figure, mm -hmm. uh, so you won't miss a part. Um, I mean, here we have all those small details, uh, all those small details, also the typical eye. Mm -hmm. We have some large black surfaces here on the leg. So, um, yeah, we go for the same, a same effect like on that side. Okay. Will you start with the leg or with the ch uh, chest armor? I think we'll start with the chest armor because it's quite, the, the part that is actually black is quite small, so uh, we should be done with that quite fast. I like to have the main light reflex here on the middle and from up here. So okay. just uh, right uh, underneath the uh, small frame here. Uh, color wise we will start with a very light blue. Uh, it's Lothern. <laughs> Lothern? 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 We don't know. It's, sun. <laughs> <laughs> it's a layer color from the uh, New Game Workshop range. Right. And we'll mix that with uh, some black. Some of you might wonder, okay, why all that blue in there? Uh, the blue is quite nice because it helps you to give a cool ambience to to the um, to the armor, and uh, also it's kind of like the uh, sky reflection on top. So um, it's always better than just um, white and black. With that color, we will start to. Uh, sketch in the the highlights. So Ben, tell me, who is Horus the War Master? Uh, uh, I have an appointment. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Okay, let me refresh your memory. Uh, if my memory is actually correct, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, he was the boss of the Lunar Wolves, which later have been called the Sons of Horus. Yeah. After the Horus heresy. Now, the name already said, indicates that he may, may or may not have played a major role <laughs> in, this, in this whole thing. So he was the trusted war master of the uh, emperor, and um, I don't I don't remember which campaign he actually was tainted by chaos. I think it was was it Damon or Davian or something. I'm not the fluff master. Yeah, so he basically was uh, tainted by chaos. He was uh, corrupted by power, and fell for the dark forces. So you see, it's just slightly uh, brighter than the than the black. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing is the layer uh, paint is also a bit satin, uh, same as the black varnish, uh, Games Workshop spray varnish. And it's quite nice because they work quite well together and you don't see so much the difference in, in glossiness. Mm -hmm. um, so you just wet the area a little bit with the base color and then take a little bit of white to the tip of the brush. And place it and then Try to smooth it out to the sides a little bit. And you see, it already works quite well for a small area like that. Mm -hmm. And with the glaze of a light medium tone, we can still blend it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Then with the clean brush, if it's too much, just take it off carefully. Okay, and we just proceed the same way around the upper frame here. So base color. A little bit of highlight color. It's maybe a little bit too much. Yeah, and clean the brush. Well, I can already see one difference uh, to the last video was that uh, last video we had the base colors with the uh, scale 75 colors, which are very, very matte um, in appearance. These seem to be a little bit, little bit glossy, just like a little satin finish with yeah. the white. But I think it works quite nice. Yeah. Um, I like the satin finish as well. I mean, it's it's totally different uh, than the than the very flat uh, flat finish. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, for, for example, on the first video, we had the orc standing in a desert on a desert base. It really fa uh, f fits to that flat and dry look. Right. <clears throat> Well, and this this armor, even though it's black, it's kind of sh it should be kind of shiny and reflective. Yeah. And um, just a matte surface would not really support that as, uh, either. So uh, it's definitely always good to choose a color that achieves the effect that you want to achieve in the end. I actually already uh, like the look of the highlight. I think we need some additional light here and there to have the uh, right shape of the of the body armor here, mm -hmm. um, because right now it looks a little uh, skewed. Yeah, also a little too too unbalanced. Really, it's, it's too strong in the middle, and the rest is almost non non there not there. Yeah. And yeah, you'll see it makes a really huge difference once we've add some gray here as well. Mm -hmm.
And right now, you're not very concerned about uh, overpainting of some, some of the details, right? Because you're going to cover those later anyways. Yeah. Yeah, especially in, in parts like that with the wolf on top, and uh, there's a lot of fine uh, ornaments there. So yeah, it's no problem if you just work thin enough, you can easily cover them later on. Mm -hmm. It was actually quite amazing to see Ben uh, kind of start the leg off camera. Um, we already know he's really fast when he's painting, and uh, most of that is really due to the uh, wet and wet technique that he's using. But uh, as he said initially with the uh, uh, black foundation, the pure black foundation, no white uh, foundation from top, uh, it even sped things up more, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I was really interested to see how it works out with the just the black. Uh, as I said, I didn't try it for, for quite some while. Mm. Um, and yeah, it, it really helped because uh, you don't have to do a lot of lining. Uh, you can just leave that in black. Yeah. Okay, and uh, a bit thin black just to get it here a little bit, the black back. It kind of binds the areas together now and limits the highlights a little bit as well. Yeah, and you will also have the same uh, glossiness in the end of the bra. Mm. It's nothing spectacular here um, because, the, the, as I said, the black here is just really, really, really tiny and small. So mm. I think. That should actually be, be already enough for the top. A lot of people will be surprised now to see that it's so bright there in this area. Yeah. Because it's still black. Why why did you do that? Um, the uh, dark colors, uh, especially when you have a glossy surf surface, uh, really uh, reflects the light strongly. So you need some bright, sparkly lights on there. Mm -hmm. um, if you would pull it over a large surface and do more more like a homo homogeneous color. Mm -hmm. uh, it would look gray, so it's really important to have that stronger light so the color still remains black. And it also gives a little texture to the surface. Mm -hmm. I think the next important black area would be the leg here. Yeah. We will refine the top part later when we do the uh, all the gold here, but for now that, that part should be good. Okay. The leg is a uh, cylinder. From the, from the general shape here, yeah. the, of the light. So one very easy trick, if you're not sure where to put the lights, is uh, put one, uh, the strongest light, directly on top of the, the shape. Mm -hmm. So it would be here. So from the direction of the light coming from yeah. above, basically. Mm -hmm. So straight here. And as you can see on the other leg, here, you have the strongest light reflex here in the middle. Yeah. And another one at almost um, the the middle of the cylinder. So that is like the horizon reflection, mm. kind of. Don't do do it like crazy eighties airbrush style, <laughs> but like um, the, the sky earth, not yes, the sky level, kind of <laughs> super shiny, shiny sky earth. Yeah. We won't do that, but it's still it's uh, that technique is quite nice to to get a good shape. So I'll show you. How that works here. Okay. Actually, we'll um, work the same way as up here, but I think here that area is a lot better to see because it's a larger surface and you actually see what what we're doing here. Yeah. Okay, so we start with a mixture of the Lotharm blue. Lotharm. <laughs> Lotharm. And some black. And put it up here. Same here, you want a continuous highlight, so that should be really running all over the lap. Mm -hmm. And a little bit lighter. That was a little wet. You can yeah. see it pools a little. Um, you could either wait a second or use a blow dryer to speed things up. Okay, so a little bit more blue in the mix. Uh, 
and then just a bit white to put a little bit. Okay, just a small highlight here on the rivets. And again, some pure white for a little bit of texture here in the, in the final highlights. It was interesting, so you're just dabbing on some really strong highlights a little bit. Yeah. With a rather dry brush even, just to create like a little texture there, or what's, what's the purpose? Um, yeah, to, to have like small, like tiny scratches, but only here in the uh, area of the, for the maximum reflex, mm. to uh, have the more like a beaten armor look. Mm -hmm. Also, it's more interesting than just a straight line. Yeah. It's really nice to see it's... Uh, a quite nice transition, mm -hmm. just with a some stronger reflexes on the top, and really simple too. I mean, this was like basically a minute. <laughs> yeah, very very simple, um, and and fast as well. Mm -hmm. um, so now um, this is like one half of the transition. We need the other one going from here down there, and we need the the horizon reflex line. Mm -hmm. uh, I will do that next, the horizon, and then the other side is mainly just the same. Okay, so um, for the um, horizon, draw like also a line here. Are you using the gray again now or? Yeah. And uh, I think we'll turn the figure because for the horizon transition, the uh, transition needs to go uh, like the other way. Or now you need you need a light transition from this line here, softer mm -hmm. to that side, and a uh, more harsh one to that side. Okay. So put some the gray in the brush and some white in the tip. So your famous <laughs> paints in one brush technique. The this is how the magic happens. Yeah. <laughs> There's actually quite a few people that commented on that and tried it for themselves, and uh, it's I think it's something to get used to, just getting the right amount of uh, the highlight color in there. Yeah. But uh, even I use it every now and then, and it's really nice. If it works, it feels good. <laughs> Quite okay. I think I will refine it and then darken it a bit down again because it uh, should not be as strong as the um, as the main light on top. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you're going to use a glaze for that. Yeah, a little bit lighter than the the tone we've used uh, as a base. Mm -hmm. We'll also add a light here on the on the edge. I know I've uh, pointed this out already in the first video. I'm gonna probably gonna point it out in the next <laughs> videos as well. Ben doesn't just create a solid line on these highlights. You just kind of with with a very light dabbing motion puts individual little highlights of diff different thickness on there and that makes a big big difference see the same there yeah it will help you to have not that ca cartoony finish in the end but a more realistic one because it looks uh, a little bit more detailed um, again uh, thin down 
black as a glaze to kind of darken that here. And so when you work on the miniature like this, you always go section by section, right? And then uh, you might come back and refine it a little bit later. Yeah. I would say I, I do all the separate parts to about 90%, mm. maybe a bit more. And then uh, once I finish the part completely, or like the leg or even the whole miniature, I go and correct the, the highlights and maybe shadows. So I get like overall uh, equally treated miniature. Or yeah. Let's say just uh, you want to pay uh, more attention to faces of, and that of course then to elements like the shoe, <laughs> but uh, uh, bit by bit, and it, it's nicer for wet and wet technique to work mm. bit by bit. So we'll do the uh, reflex here, the main reflex, and I think it, then we should really see how the uh, shape here is. So the bluish base color. Brush. This is basically classical feathering what you're doing yeah. right now, right? So you're, you're putting on a color uh, using a wet, clean brush, and then, uh, well, and then you just feather it out, basically making it uh, transparent at the end. Yeah, and now just with white, while the color is still wet. And darker color to fade it out. And wet brush. If you try this technique at home for the first time, you'll uh, probably curse a little bit sometimes. It's not always going to work. Yeah, you need a little practice for that. Um, especially the amount of color that you need in the brush is little hard to, to get it right. I just uh, took some black and lined this here mm -hmm. because there was some light color in the, the recess. So from here. Here as well it's not so important that you don't touch the the uh, round buttons because uh, you will color them later later on anyway mm -hmm. with the with the gold color so uh, don't be too afraid and try to paint around them and you're looking at it right now and looking at the shape I, I saw you turning it around a little bit yeah so what what do you what do you look for when you do that um I see if it works good with the natural reflection of the color mm -hmm. uh, because you can see when you turn it in the light uh, the reflex is just like wandering around the surface. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I check if it works with the highlight or if I see any uh, any errors in the, in the transition. Mm -hmm. And I think it should be should be okay for now. Um, this element here will be uh, will be gold. Uh, same as same as on the other side. Mm -hmm. So um, we can leave it like that. And I think this small piston there, piston in the in the middle. Yep. Uh, we will do that more in a uh, non-metal tone, in a, mm -hmm. like in a silver metal tone, um, because we've already used the blue in there. We will just uh, use uh, almost pure pure. Um, leather and blue. It's still matching to the black, but uh, just a bit brighter. And you'll also work with very strong contrast, as we saw on the other leg. Yeah. Uh, the strong contrast is really important to to get that metal look. And I think also that um, because you are missing those extremely strong and extremely sh uh, sharp contrasts on the armor, that separates metal from not being metal. Yeah. So you really have a black material instead of a metal material.
I don't know which which of the uh, um, Forge World uh, special character series is my favorite, but I think this one is definitely up there. It's amazing on the monitor it really looks like the pure reflection of metal right now especially because it's inside this really dark uh, area yeah the the contrast is uh, really good between the the black and the uh, just the pale bluish white all in the middle yeah so people always say more contrast that's almost not possible to put any more contrast than that <laughs> yeah i think in, in the end i'll add some uh, add a tiny bit of um, red or something to to um, even make it a little bit um, look a little bit more round mm -hmm. because right now it's uh, quite flat on top. Mm -hmm. So, but we'll we'll do that in the, one of the final stages. Okay. Are you using a glaze a little bit to get that shape back? Yeah. So we will just go on like that with the other black parts here on the armor, but it's really almost the same everywhere. Um, even here, we'll just do the same kind of rough highlight here on top of that, that element here. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll be back for the gold frames. So that really is almost everything there is to know about painting this armor into this kind of black material that you have already done and shown. Uh, is there maybe one more area that we can show it's where it's good to see? Yeah, I think uh, here, because this here is quite uh, straight and uh, blank, mm. um, it's also good to see right here in the uh, back element. Ah, okay, here. yeah. Um, you can see here on the other side, it worked quite nice with the more, uh, more subtle uh, reflex of the, mm. of the horizon. So we're going for something like that, maybe a little bit lighter because it's more exposed to the to the sun. Okay. Okay, we start with the blue gray mix and just place the line right here in the middle. Okay, and for this red, we will just, uh, with a little bit black on the brush, just uh, feather it a little bit to the side, or a bit blended. A little bit to both sides. I think the, the motion of the brush between wet blending and feathering is not very diff different. It's just that usually you use feathering as a term when you're using no paint on the brush, right? Yeah. Just water or... Yeah. So we let that dry for a second and then we'll add some stronger reflexes in the middle. Mm -hmm. You can see the transition to the, towards the sides is still a little rough, so just a little dark place to correct it. Okay, now the light color on the brush and a little bit white on the tip. Use the small rivets and small elements. I, when I started uh, with the other leg, I thought about picking this out in gold. Mm -hmm. um, but then somehow I liked it in the, in the dark black. So it looks a bit more brutal, I think, than having it like gold rings on a black armor. I think if you're not careful, it looks like a bee. <laughs> When it comes to painting, um, a lot of people want to create these really ultra, super smooth blendings. And uh, I think one of the characteristics of your style is that you do smooth blendings, but they're not always ultra smooth. They're like, like, not like kind of sterile or um, yeah, lifeless. Uh, so when it comes to these kind of things, what do you think is more important? Having the right contrast or having the most perfect blending in the world? I think the the choice of color is really important, mm -hmm. and um, I think it's not so important that you you have it like 
hundred percent perfectly blended. Sometimes mm. I even make nice blendings, and then I just put light dots, light light dots or scratches on there. Yeah. But I think it really helps the the figure to transport more atmosphere if you have small uh, scratches, highlights, yeah. uh, something that is not too smooth and too perfect because uh, it should not look like the figures are out of the uh, paint shop directly. <laughs> Yeah, I think it also it's a question of the character of the miniature. Yeah. If you want to have, a, let's say, a very round, shiny robot uh, with uh, very few edges, then you might want to go for an extremely smooth blending just to show it's plastic and new and whatever. Uh, but a miniature like this, if it's just too clean, it just doesn't look right. And I think just uh, picking out the right highlights like you do right now, uh, the right contrast at the right point, just uh, makes such a big difference. Definitely, yeah. I think it's always important to uh, take a close look to reality and how things uh, reflect light and uh, it make your paint job a lot more plausible if you just get the, the right points where the light just breaks on the surface. Mm. That's, I think that's also the skill that you acquire over time. Is you don't have to have studied uh, light uh, <laughs> refracturing, uh, whatever, <laughs> like, uh, or even art or anything. It's just something you will kind of learn to pick up uh, as you observe things in the yeah. nature. Definitely. And time by time, if you just constantly paint and try to think about light, and you'll start to see a lot different uh, things also in your, in your daily life. Mm. And again, not to lose the, the shape here. I will um, just give a little bit of lighter color here to the sides. Again, just dark ways to soft it out a bit to the sides. So that should be it for the black parts at the moment. Yes, uh, very easy. I think everyone could, could repeat it at home. Um, you just have to get the amount of white right that you use for if you try to use the uh, the uh, two colors in one brush technique. Yeah. Um, and get to the overall contrast right. I think once we've added the uh, the gold to the armor, it also changes a lot the, the way we see all the volumes because right now this all those elements here are quite dark. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that will be the next part. Okay, so we'll finish um, all of the black parts of the leg uh, off camera now. Any other black parts you want to finish off cam? I think there's not much left, right? No, I think that, that should be good. Yeah. On uh, the back we'll have the, uh, the cloak anyways. Yeah, and the top part here we will do that together with the face. Okay. Um, so I think that should be good for now for the black parts. All right.